Kia ora. Welcome to another episode where we share relevant content to help tourism and hospitality businesses thrive. Join us each week as we share insights and hear from industry specialists. We hope you enjoy this week's episode and to stay up to date, why don't you click the subscribe button to get notified when a new video drops. Now we welcome you to sit back and enjoy this week's episode. Hello and welcome back. Today I'm really excited because we are going to be talking to another tourism marketer. Now she describes it as the fact that she can sell it, but she also writes about it. She's the founder of Weekend Getaway and Discover Aotearoa. She's written for publications such as Wilderness Motorhomes and also RV Lifestyle Magazine. I am super excited for Alex to join us today as she shares with us some top SEO tips that you need to know about when you're working on your tourism business. Now, Alex, welcome to the floor. How are you? Hi, Tracy. Good and you? Very well, very well, Alex. Hey, look, Alex, before we get into the real fun stuff, because I know people are wanting to listen to your tips, because when you take writing and apply it to a website, it's not just about telling a story, is it? Um, no, no, there's a lot of technical things behind it as well. Um, it needs to run. Um, it needs to like be fast enough. It needs to be read, uh, readable for the for the humans and Google. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, it's just all really tricky and not as easy yeah, as it sounds. Yeah, totally. And I think that's the thing that people forget about is, is is that it's not just about how we read it, but it's how Google reads it. But before exactly. we get into the cool stuff, before we get into the real cool stuff, I would love for you to just share with anyone that's listening today just a little bit about your businesses because, you know, most people we talk to have one business, but you have two businesses <laughs> that you are working with. So can you just share with us a little bit about those businesses? Yeah, that just kind of happened by coincidence. So um, I came to New Zealand about four years ago from Switzerland and I've always worked in tourism. And just like while I was waiting for my work visa to be approved, I kind of started a travel blog called Discover Aotearoa mainly for like family back home to to read what I'm up to and like as I started working I just kind of kept that going and it just kind of grew and I got better and then I got interested in SEO and how to get it even like better and more technical and so make the people actually come to me and yeah, just kind of kept it running next to um, next to my day job. And then last year during COVID, like during the first lockdown, I just coincidentally across a domain called We Can Getaways. And well, I, I didn't have I didn't have a day job anymore, so I just kind of stumbled across it while looking for keywords. And. Uh, thought well we can get away that's that's something that a lot of people are going to want to do because we can't go anywhere yeah ironically you know with yeah. COVID that that's all anyone was doing really exactly yes so and I like I used to work for flight center um, as a product manager for for domestic travel and I just kind of thought well we can get away so that's that's a really good thing to do and just kind of started creating little packages of like two nights and um one activity just for for busy kiwis who don't really have the time to organize um a getaway themselves that's cool that's really cool and and i think what's really interesting is is that you you actually had been mindful of the keywords when actually looking for yeah. a business name. I, I kind of wish I, I had thought about that as well. well. I, I mean, wish I know I've got the word the first yeah. one as well. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And and it's quite funny that we often don't uh, we don't plan. We we don't think about what the search engines think of our brand. We just fall in love with a name, don't we? And we just yeah. run with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Hey, look, let's get into it. So you've got three tips for us today. Yes. What is the first tip? Um, the first one, the most important one, is to use the keywords that I just mentioned. Hey, yeah. Um, keywords, they're like little 
like either small snippets or like a whole phrase or a question that just a lot of people enter into Google or other search yep. engines, but mainly Google, <laughs> and that have that have a search volume and yeah like it's it's it could be something small like queenstown restaurants mm -hmm. or it could be something bigger like where is the best place to eat in rest uh, in queenstown yeah so google picks up those longer those longer sentences now don't they yeah yeah they they pick up like they're really good with uh with noticing like even when you say like place to eat in Queenstown, for example, they they pick up. Okay, she wants a restaurant, or a pub, yeah. or just like like that. It, it makes all the connections in the background. Yeah, yeah. I had heard that um, once upon a time when we we're using keywords. So, say for example, we were targeting the U.S. market uh, as well as a website that was targeting, say, a New Zealand market. When we think about holidays, we call it a holiday here, but they call it a vacation in yep. America. And I, my understanding, and correct me if I'm wrong, but now Google is understanding, like you said about the pubs and restaurants, but Google is now understanding that if, if someone from America is looking for a vacation in New Zealand, it will actually work out that the word holidays is the equivalent um, of the word vacation. Yes, it, it does pick it up to a certain extent, but it's still better like um to focus on like uh, to to decide what your target market is and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. figure out what the keywords are that go with the target market just to make it easier yeah so you would have to like look or find find um so called keyword planners yeah um that help make your life a bit easier and figure out who's actually looking for something yeah. So on that note, something. Sorry. Yeah. So on that note, what what kind of keyword planners would you would you reckon, recommend someone yeah. to use or to what you know what's out there that's I guess maybe free that people yeah. can use? Um. So the free ones are, are usually a little bit um, limited to yeah. like a number of keywords per day. Um, what what I personally find really really important is to connect your website with Google Search Console. Yep. Okay. Uh, because with Google Search Console, you all um, it shows you which keywords you're already ranking. Yep. And which keywords people can pass you but they haven't clicked. So nice. that's like it's, that's a good way to to get started to figure out well which say maybe 10 or 20 main keywords do I really want on the website mm. and like things that people already kind of had like it's called impressions so they already saw me yeah um can I ask I a silly question can I ask a silly question yeah. can you define what impressions are uh yes <laughs> so impressions <laughs> impressions is if someone like if we stay with Queenstown restaurant for example mm. someone enters Queenstown restaurants into Google and then they scroll mm -hmm. and you just kind of scroll past. So you you were there and they might have seen you, uh, maybe not. But like you, you came, you um you, they came past you. But they didn't. Right. Click. So we saw it. So essentially we saw it on the page. We may not have paid any attention to it, but at least Google yeah, is saying it was that there. it served it to you and it and, yeah. and you saw it. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, that's cool. Right. So yeah, um, with another good, sorry, another yeah. good one oh, no, you, is um, keyword planner from Google. Right. Yep. Um, you, you would have to log in or sign up for a um, Google Ads account. You don't actually yep. have to run an ad if you don't want to, but you have to sign into Google Ads, and you will see, like it, it's kind of helping you plan the keywords. Um, I by like by difficulty. So you can mm -hmm. see like how many people are searching for a keyword and like how difficult is it going to be to rank for that? Like for example, Queenstown restaurants is probably going to be unlikely. Yeah. But like maybe you can find on something else that also has that phrase in it, which is the best queen, like Queenstown restaurant, for example, might be easier to uh, to rank for. 
So a question for you, if I, I think I know what my keywords are and I can go and have a look and these tools would give me an indication of what it thinks my keywords are by the relevance of its content. But how, what, what do you recommend? And I think this might move us into the next point, but how do you, how do you get people thinking or, or how do we move our website if, say, for example, I look at the keywords and they're not actually relevant to anything I do? <laughs> yeah, yeah, like uh, you, you come across some funny some funny things uh, in Google Search Console that, that where you had impressions um, that have absolutely nothing to do with you. <laughs> yeah. That is yeah. true. Um yeah, you, you don't you don't use those ones, obviously. Um, you just like kind of use the relevant keywords, like yeah. the right yeah. content that is relevant for your website, and yeah. that you want to rank for. Like yeah. for, I was going to say because there's one thing that I find with clients that's really interesting is is that and it happens quite often with accommodation, they don't actually use the word accommodation in any of their text. You mean the, the the accommodation websites? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Some of them, they, they <laughs> don't even use the word accommodation. So they're talking about their lovely location. There's lots of beautiful photos. Uh, they're talking about a bed, but they don't actually say the word accommodation. Yep, yep, that is correct. And they might be lucky and still rank for it. Mm. Like if... Um, if they have other keywords that like if they have the word hotel in it, then Google picks up that it could also be accommodation, but it is better. Like you're more likely to rank if you actually use the term that Google knows brings in traffic or that people yeah. search for. But yeah. you can, you can definitely also rank for something if you're lucky um, that you didn't even use. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know, I know. And it's interesting in, in working with some of the clients I have, you, you look at where they rank and you're like, how did we get there? But sometimes yeah. Google is, the, the the AI in Google is quite smart, the, the way that it may, you may not actually have a sentence the way that it's picked up a keyword. So it might move words yeah. around. So it's using a yeah, word. Sometimes it, it does that too. Yeah. Sometimes it does that too, but it's a lot more powerful if you actually use it as people search for it. That's a good tip. So, because, because, other, because otherwise it just kind of has to go and pick and go and look like, oh, yeah, there's a word, there's a word. And, and yeah, and, and puzzle it together. And if you just kind of spill it out for, for yep. Google, um, it, it knows it a lot faster and better. And and I guess it's also sure to like that you actually are doing this and that you have authority in that in that space. Yep. Yep. So a, a silly question, because I, I think of uh, social media and when we think about hashtags, I think of keywords, is like how many keywords should a business have? Or what should they focus on? Well, for one, hashtags and keywords, they're definitely not the same. So hashtag is only for social media. Um, that's not that's not going to work for SEO. <laughs> um, how many how many keywords? Well, if you're you can you can have as many as you want, really. Hmm. Um, I'd say like of your of your main keywords, maybe 10, 15 of the ones that you keep using. Mm -hmm. Um, but but really, like as long as it makes sense and is readable for for people, and mm -hmm. you don't just jam all the all the keywords into a non-readable sentence, yeah, um, you can use as many as you like, as long as they're relevant. As long as they're relevant. Okay. Yeah. Now I reckon that's a good segue to tip number two. Yes, relevant content. <laughs> yes um so regular and relevant content um relevant like if you have an accommodation um you do write about the accommodation um mainly but you can also write about like the, the things that you that um that you can do around um 
say Queenstown since we're in Queenstown already. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so like you can you can write about like um, your rooms, your dining options, but also about um, like all the bike rides that you can do around Queenstown, all the walks. Yeah. And yeah, so it's it's still relevant because it's all about that one destination. And yeah, so so when we talk about um, marketing, we talk about there's the product and then there's the things that you can do around it. So you're saying that if my product's a restaurant, it's not just about the restaurant, it's about encouraging people to come to my restaurant. So what is it that's going to attract them whilst they're here and the stories that you can tell to inspire them? So as long as yep. it's... As long as it's not, you yeah. know, about the rubbish collection, it's more about come and do, <laughs> you know, come and stay here. We have amazing hotels. Yeah. We've got, you know, we've got this affiliation with this place or this chef or this yeah, exactly. person. Yeah, exactly. And uh, maybe like other like like hotels or something as a restaurant that you're working with, and then like you kind of help each other out. Um, yeah. it, it doesn't. It doesn't all just have to be about your business only. Like yeah. as long as long as it helps your your site visitor and yep. like it's about is like it's still connected to like your, your right. business it's um it's all good all good to write because at some point you might run out of ideas what to write about your own business yeah so obviously the goal for someone coming to your website is we want it to be relevant but we want them to stay there for a yep. period of time, don't we? So, so by writing something that is relevant that keeps them on the website, Google goes, "Hey, this this person searched this term, come to them, and they've stayed a while, so it must be pretty good." Yeah, yep. yeah, and also like if if um, like if you if you do write about like all the other things that there are to do and to see around, mm -hmm. like around your your destination, um. Yeah, it, it also kind of helps helps Google seeing that that you know that you know your thing, like that that you yeah, know what you're talking yeah. about. Yeah, yeah, and like it it helps you it helps you bump bump yourself up, and the more and the longer people stay on your website, the more they click within the website. Yeah, um, the the better Google reacts to that as well. Yeah. So, so I want to ask you bookings and things as well. <laughs> oh yeah, true. You might get bookings. Yeah, that's what we want. Fingers crossed. Everyone wants bookings or or a sale. Um, now, regular content. You, yes. I guess this is a tough one for a lot of people because they build their website, they get it live, and they're like, "See you later." So, talk us through this regular bit because it, it says to me that I need to be putting content on my website, or I need to yeah. be changing it. Which one is it? Yeah. Um, you, you can change it, but that would probably be a bit too too much effort to continuously do. Um, the easiest the easiest way to do this is by adding a blog to the website. Okay. Yep. And I know, like a lot of people say, it's like ah, oh, but it's videos, and like every everyone wants to see videos now. Like no one reads. Uh, yes, but Google does. Yeah. So yep. Google, like if you if you're not like you might not be writing for for actual humans, but mm. you are writing for Google. Yeah, and hopefully, and hopefully, humans see it too. But um, yeah, um, just like by by writing regular blog posts about your business, about what you're up to, um, about things to do around you. Mm. Um, it's just like it, it gives that regular kind of bump up like google like hey yep. i'm still here yeah yeah i'm still here and, look, and i'm we, still doing my thing yeah and look we do exactly that we take these videos and we put the words to the video so we we tell a story about the video so we've got the, the words and the video and that helps with our our traffic as well yep. so we know it works yep. uh exactly. it's just that it's yeah it's, it's just, about people making it happen really isn't it Oh, this is what happens with a live. We might have lost Alex just for a split second. 
Yep. Yep. We've officially yeah. lost Alex. Oh, there she is. She's come back. She's come back. <laughs> I'm back. I'm wow. Back. Back. Sorry. <laughs> It's okay. I mean, I was just wondering if you had a little bit of a nap, but that's what, you know, that's that's what happens when you're live. Things just happen and you just got to roll with it. Yeah. Um, so where were we? Regular. Uh, regular content, yeah. Regular content. Um, yeah, so like, and also how, how regular it's supposed to be. Um, just like as regular as you can, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. like obviously if you have a business to run, you don't really have the time to constantly churn out, um, text that, um, like that you can just like write on, on the side. Yeah. Um, yeah. like if you have like something that you write maybe once a month, um, if it has to be every two months, that's still okay. As long as, as long as it comes regularly. Yeah, yeah. Um, just saying to anyone watching that uh, Alex is one of those people that helps with regular content and she's just dropped off so I can say whatever I like about her now. But Alex does write regular content for a lot of tourism businesses and helps them keep their content regular. Uh, and, and she is coming back. Oh, boy, got to love got to love a bit of technical difficulties. Um Alex, are you back, Alex? Come back, Alex. No, I think we've uh, maybe lost Alex for now. So just whilst we wait for Alex to come back on to screen, I'll just talk about uh, about regular content. So as Alex mentioned, that it's really important that we are um, constantly updating our content on our website. And the thing is, is that it comes back to being relevant. So it's not just about putting some information on your website and hoping that just because it's fresh, Google will turn around and go, oh, okay, there's some new content. Of course, Google loves new content. It's always looking for fresh content and it gives it a reason to go in and index your website. But when you don't have content, uh, if you just throw content up there and it has no relevance to the page, Google notices that and goes, bum, bum, this doesn't match. This doesn't match what this business is doing. If three quarters of the website is uh, about one thing and you then all of a sudden just chuck some text up and let's say, for example, you've written about your business for so long and then all of a sudden you – uh, write about um, a very political stance that you believe in. That's not going to be relevant on your website. Now, she's just come back, and I'm just going to add her into the screen. I'm hey, so Alex, sorry. We, we know just, what's happening. We, we, <laughs> just, we just continued on with the regular content. So I just shared some stories. Um, you're going to have to watch back to find out what I said. I said nothing okay. bad about you at all. Okay. So, <laughs> hey, maybe we can move on to number three before yeah, we lose you again. Hopefully idea. we don't lose you again. <laughs> <laughs> yes, number three would be Link Choose. Yeah, I love this name. You have to explain what it is, but I love this name because the first time I ever heard it, I was like, that is cool. What Jesus, is Link Juice? Link. Um, link Juice is like all the backlinks you can get from other websites, just mm-hmm. like really quickly and easily. <laughs> so it's um, like you, you write something about a business or, um, or like you write something on your website and someone reads it and was like, hey, that's really cool. Like I like I like that content. I like this restaurant or this hotel. I'm gonna like write about them and mention them and link from my website to theirs. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And, and so link this is really important for for SEO um, because it helps Google kind of verify your authority. Yeah. Yeah. So yep. They know that what you're doing is like is important and makes sense and is like um current yeah yeah i try to explain to people that have if you're a tourism business especially if you have if you're linked to tourism new zealand so tourism new zealand's website links back to you because you've got a listing on there your local rto you've got a your product listed there it links back to you there or um they're all links of authority. They're, they're saying that we're a tourism board and we're recommending your tourism product. But yep. if all of a sudden you get a uh, an Oakley Sunglass discount website linking to your website, 
that would be deemed as a non-relevant and and am I right in saying that Google actually penalizes for bad links? Yes, but I don't think that the old clay would be would be a, no. a big issue. But uh, X-rated X-rated websites definitely. <laughs> <laughs> You had to go there. <laughs> and, and, it, and it does happen. Like there is there is um, definitely another reason to have Google Search Console connected connected to your website. So you can actually find those those iffy websites because I don't know, yeah. I don't even know why that happens, but it does. Um so you, you find all those those iffy websites and you can like it's so called disavow. Just kind of disavow those websites so you tell them it's like okay I have nothing to do with them I don't know what they want and mm -hmm. that way Google Google knows it's not actually yours and they're not going to penalize for it right right so yeah. tell me um how do people actually like if they want to grow links how do they how do they go about growing links like what's some recommendations around building links for your website well, I guess yeah, yeah, that's is, that's how I felt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, there is like some like the, the there's the the most legal one is to just wait and hope. Yeah, uh, for for okay. someone to discover you and think, hey, that is awesome. I'm gonna link to it. Um, another way is to just like like for example, like for for New Zealand businesses, a really good um. Like websites you have links from is like Stuff Travel, New Zealand Herald, mm -hmm. and all that. And you can just try and reach out to the people. And it's like, hey, do you want to write about us? Yeah. And yeah. like at the moment with the borders closed, maybe they do. Maybe, maybe they send someone, they send someone down, has they have like tried the product to have a mill. And uh, so then, you're getting a travel ride and coming right. right. Yeah. Okay. So getting yeah. a travel writer and, to write about your product. Yeah. yeah. And bloggers, obviously, as well. <laughs> yeah. 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 And yeah. and there's like some some other more or less like um, legal in in Google eyes um, ways. Like there's Facebook groups where you can where you can go and you can actually ask for like to link to each other. Oh right. Really. Yeah. <laughs> It's a so thing I a lot like of bloggers do. I feel like that's cheating. If it's ah, oh, you're gone again. Oh, we can you hear still us, here? Alex? Yeah, we're still here. Oh, look. Do you know what's really funny is is that whilst Alex is trying to find us, I'm in Marlborough and I I don't know if you're if you're here, but um, the Facebook can. the Facebook groups is um, something that bloggers do, like um, travel bloggers. Um, Oh, are you still here? Yep. Yeah. Was I gone? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay, you can hear yeah. me. That's good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. So when it rains, have... it pours. When it rains, it pours. You know, it's yeah. just one of those things. Yeah. Today. <laughs> um, so yeah, the, the Facebook groups. They, there's um, like something like travel bloggers do with each other. Like they say, hey, I wrote something about New Zealand. Does someone else have content about New Zealand where we can interlink with each other? Ah, right. So that's okay. that's a way. Google Google isn't a fan of it, but like hasn't been penalizing it. Yet. Yeah, you're back, Alex. Yeah. So that so Google hasn't been penalizing it yet for the cross yeah. over of of content. Okay. Yeah. But like the, the easiest way is just to have like people who are like writing about you and like taking um, doing like videos, um, like vloggers, like um, Rodi for example, have them have them come to you, experience your product, and then link to you from their website. That's that's the most right. legit one, and and like just reach out to to um, big newsletters and big like online portals and and just ask wow i i feel like we could just have a whole conversation just on how to propagate links in a in a, in a sense isn't it because it's really just yeah it's it's really link juice and and the strategy behind building links 
it all forms part of an overall marketing strategy, doesn't it? Yeah. 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 Definitely. So it's yeah, it's like um, a, it's a it's, whole big a whole big um plan and that's just like the little piece of puzzle. Um, I know, it's crazy. It's, it's, it's just so it, yeah. crazy. There is so <laughs> much. Now, Alex, I love that. So those three tips again, use keywords, regular and relevant content, mm-hmm. and link juice. And I, I link just hope juice. Anyone that's watching this is going to use that as their new favorite word, link juice, because uh, I think it's quite. I think it's cool. I actually think it's quite cool. But there's some really good tips there, and you know, it's important for any business, that, and especially anyone that's watching this, is that you just keep an eye on on your keywords because keywords do change over time. So if your website was written five years ago, you've got to come back into the now and actually review it and make sure that it's yeah. it's right and it's probably. Yeah, I- so something else that that could have uh, that could be if you actually did like start your keywords five or maybe ten years ago is like back then it was okay to do the so called keyword stuffing. So yes. where you just take all those keywords and you make like an invisible list at the bottom of your web uh, of your of your page, and then kind mm. of stuff all those keywords in, and you're not allowed to do that anymore. So if you if you still have that yes. somewhere, you have to go and take it out. Get rid of it. Get rid of it. Yeah. No, I had actually stumbled across someone's website one day where I accidentally held my mouse down and I highlighted a whole lot of keywords that were actually in in the background. Hey, and yeah. they put all of their words in there, and and I went to go back one day to find it, and they'd actually updated their website. So someone also told them no, no. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's and really it's, not, it's not visible because it's like even though it's it's written, it's like in the same as same color as the background, so no one can actually see it. But it's just like stuffed into into the page. Yeah, and Google can pick that up now, can't it? It, it can. It yeah. it will actually go. Hang on, there's too many of those keywords. What's going on? Is that yeah? And it, right it doesn't it doesn't form right? a sentence. It's just gibberish. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think sometimes some people's websites. I think some people's websites are just gibberish anyway. So like, <laughs> just <laughs> they haven't really had a lot of. Uh, they haven't paid it much attention. I don't think. Now, Alex, that that there's three really good tips, and you know we've we've already just we've just hit thirty minutes. Who thought that we could talk about these three topics in thirty minutes? I mean, warranted. Yeah, we just for a little bit disappear. and came back. <laughs> yeah, you kept, yeah. I think we're going to call you Alex the Houdini. Um, you kept disappearing just in the middle of, of what you were talking about. But no, I really appreciate your time today and and talking to us about these three key things because it, they're really relevant to the work that you do, uh, especially with your clients. Yes. So when you're writing for clients, these are things that you have to be be thinking about. And we really, really underestimate the power of words on our website. Um, yes. So I really yep. appreciate Definitely. you taking the time. Of, of coming and talking to us because we will no doubt talk more about the power of the words and how it can help in any tourism businesses or just any businesses marketing strategy to make sure that they get their point across and also that they're talking to Google the way Google wants us to be talking to them. Yeah. So Alex, hey, thank you so much. A big thank you for me. Um, thank you. Sorry for if- all the disappearing. Yeah, it's okay. And for anyone that's watching this show, please, you know, if you do like what we do, please like, share, comment. Uh, You know, we do do what we do because you love what we do. So we're going to keep doing it. And uh, we really appreciate for those that contribute to our our show. So, again, Alex, thank you so much. And to everyone else out there, stay safe and we'll see you next week. Bye. Yeah.